And welcome back. It is a sad night. Kansas City falls to four, or sorry, eight and four, uh, freezing in Green Bay. Their offense could not get it going, could not really get, uh, you know, they got in their own way several times, but there's going to be a lot we're going to be talking about. Uh, the freezing under the lights, injuries mounting, Chiefs dropping to eight and four, and no longer being in control of their destiny in the playoffs today on Locked on Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Hey, Chiefs Kingdom, welcome back for another episode of Locked On Chiefs, your daily podcast covering the Kansas City Chiefs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for always making Locked On Chiefs your first listen of the day. Don't forget we are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube as well. I am Chris Clark. He is Matt Derrick of Chiefs Digest. There is a lot to get two and a lot to talk about in this game uh first things first though Kansas City's offense beat themselves at multiple times in this game uh and allowing sacks in the red zone is not going to be something that's going to get you wins yeah i mean this was i think a little bit more of the same as far as we've seen from the struggling chiefs offense with you know either Mahomes not finding anyone downfield or no one getting separation and holding on to the ball too long it's not necessarily on the quarterback. I mean, it can be on the receivers. It could be on the offensive line. They also had some penalties, which, you know, again, there was a couple that, you know, are are not, once again, not necessarily on the linemen. Sometimes it's a case of, you know, the quarterback is is scrambling and, and, and a lineman gets caught in a bad spot. But again, I mean, too many penalties. It was it was five for 50, but they, there were some big penalties that killed him at r- wrong times. One turnover that was at a very costly time, but you you lose those battles, you lose the turnover battle, you lose the the the, the and they didn't exactly lose the penalty battle, but I think they had more you know devastating penalties, drive killing penalties than the than the Packers did. That's going to get you every single time, and it got the Chiefs again tonight. Yeah, and you can't put the game in the refs' hands, and Kansas City unfortunately was doing that in the fourth quarter. Uh, you talk about the turnover, that's absolutely a big play. You cannot turn the ball over trying to drive. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of uh, people talking whether or not that was on Sky Moore, whether or not it was on Patrick Mahomes. I'll have to go back and rewatch it. It looked like he overthrew him, but it also looked like maybe Sky Moore stuttered on that specific play. But there's also different plays throughout the game where – you know, like I said, the third down sacks, you cannot allow a third down sacks in the red zone. And you're right. That's sometimes on the offensive line. I thought tonight it was probably more on the quarterback. He's got to get rid of the ball. Uh, and I guess it really didn't keep points off the board because they got the field goals anyway. But those are drive killers. And, you know, to allow three sacks, and I think it's the first time this season that they've allowed three sacks. I think that they've only allowed two sacks in a game prior to tonight. And now they allow uh, 27 points and three sacks. Yeah. And, you know, and once again, I mean, you kind of pointed out there, it's the timing of everything tonight. I mean, when the bad plays happen, they just seem to be at the exact wrong time. And, you know, we, we talked a little bit last week about the the bench shortening for from a home from a receiver standpoint. And that was kind of the case again early tonight. I mean, it was except I think it was even more so than it was last week. I mean, unless it was Travis Kelsey, Rasheed Rice, or Isaiah Pacheco, I mean, early on, nobody was getting the ball. And yeah, MVS ends up with five targets. But other than that, no one was really getting involved. And that revolves back to the question, is is this on the receivers for not getting enough separation? Is it is it the play calling? Is it the quarterback? You know, not, not getting rid of the ball quickly enough. But that's the other thing is I think that the Chiefs took a little bit of a step backward tonight from what we saw against the Raiders because last week it was such a, a ball control, get rid of the football quickly offense. Um, they ran the ball effectively tonight. There's nothing to complain about what Isaiah Pacheco did other than throwing a punch that gets himself ejected from the game. Um, but that was all well and good. But again, you know, I, I, from the passing, Mahomes never really got in rhythm. And you, I think you saw that as, as the game manifested. That was why they really couldn't sustain any drives is that they just couldn't get momentum in the passing game. Well, as you talk about Pacheco, Pacheco's lucky to actually be walking out of the field, off the field. Uh, that was a scary play. I thought he was for sure probably done for the season the way he got bit back. Uh, amazing for him to be able to come back and actually do what he did. Uh, you know, you look at what they did on offense and you start talking about MBS. You know, obviously we can talk about the missed pass interference down at the late of the game, but there's other plays that he missed as well. I mean, you look at the downfield throw that Mahomes had to him. If Mahomes, if 
MVS stays a little bit further outside, that's probably an easier completion uh, versus losing it and trying to get back to it at that point. So just a lot of different things. Uh, you know, Justin Watson, I'm going to have to wait and see what the snap count looks like, but Justin Watson was on the field, not targeted at all tonight. And I'm not saying that he should have been, but to play that many snaps and not get a single target says a lot about what your role in this offense is going to be. Uh, still couldn't get Kadarius Tony going. Uh, Sky Moore had a couple of targets, uh, including the interception. But you know, overall, it was Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey, and then it was it, it was you know Pacheco out of the backfield as well. Yeah, and and I, I thought they had some really good plays as far as you know trying to get the ball to Rasheed Rice, and especially in space. And you saw I that a couple those. of times. Yeah, that's that's great. I mean, and then yeah, they had obviously a, a couple of things designed to try and get the Kadarius Tony involved, but. Uh, you know, he is he's not an every down player at this point. You know, he's he's going to be their their niche gadget guy. Um, so it's up to the others. And right now, uh, other than Rasheed Rice, no one is separating themselves. Yeah, and that's going to be a big question going into the second part or the rest of this season. Uh, how are you going to continue to play against teams? They got a tough game against Buffalo. Uh, you can say what you want about Buffalo. But they're six and six. They're coming off a bye week. They're going to be rested. I think that that's going to be a very tough game in Arrowhead. Uh, it should be something that Kansas City should be able to win. But, you know, we're going to be talking about injuries here in just a second. But you start looking at some of the things that they're dealing with tonight. Uh, you know, Wanya Morris played more snaps than he's played in the entire season tonight because Donovan Smith got injured. Uh, and I thought he looked good for the most part. He was powerful in the running game, uh, but he probably gave up some pressure that you don't want to see. But at the same time, uh, it was good to see him get in there and, you know, show what he can do. And, and we'll see whether or not Smith is some, a guy that can come back next week. Uh, but the defense, I, you know, they couldn't stop uh, Dylan at all. And you look at this game and that's what it came down to is Dylan just continued to run uh, 4.1 yard average is usually not something that you're going to be worried that too, that worried about. It's not fantastic. It's Okay. Uh, but it was effective enough tonight. He moved the, the ball when they needed him to move the ball. Uh, Taylor came in and had a couple of nice runs. Uh, overall, they just overpowered the Chiefs, and they took it to him from the start. Yeah, and that's a couple of things that I, I would be worried about for the for the Chiefs' defense going forward is that the the Packers really concentrated on you know moving the ball around the field. I mean, laterally and really stretching out the Chiefs' defense and and pushing them that direction. Whether it was in the passing game or in the run game, I mean, Christian Watson had a couple of nice runs. Um, they were doing things to stretch the Chiefs' defense, and and there were a couple of little wrinkles that I hadn't seen you know teams deploy against the Chiefs before. The fact that they work tonight means you're probably going to see a lot more of them in the weeks ahead, and the Chiefs are going to have to figure out how to stop that. Um, as far as getting kind of gashed up the middle a little bit in the run game, I think you certainly hope that if Nick Bolton's back next week, that that tightens up. Um, did just hear from the from the Andy Reid update in the post game press conference. You know, Drew Tranquil does obviously have the concussion. That can be a short term or a longer term outing. I mean, you just don't know with those. Uh, they are looking at Brian Cook's ankle. He didn't go into a lot of depth on that one, but certainly based on what we saw on the field, that one looks like a significant injury. So it would it would be a surprise to me if that wasn't necessarily even a season-ending injury for Cook. But let's wait to see what we hear in the next couple of days for sure because he's going to be getting more tests, especially when it gets back to Kansas City. Um, but Donovan Smith is the other one you mentioned, and that's, you know, he, he suffered the stinger last week, and that's on top of the, the shoulder injury that he's already been dealing with. So, you know, now he's kind of got two things that are bothering him a little bit, and you could tell, I mean, he was just not feeling very comfortable tonight, and that's what gets Wanya Morris in there. I mean, it, for the longer-term perspective of the Chiefs, and, you know, hey, Wanya Morris, there's a reasonable chance you're starting left tackle next year. So you're going to find out more about him probably now, you know, depending on how quickly Smith can recover. You know, hey, starting a rookie at left tackle against Buffalo, even with the injuries that they have suffered, still a little scary. Um, but this, this this is a game that the Chiefs are going to have to lick their wounds a little bit. I mean, defensively, this was obviously their worst outing of the year. I don't, uh, not only when you just take into, you know, what they gave up, through both the pass and the run and the points scored. And to me, considering the opponent, uh, this to me was by far the worst performance of the year. Yeah, there's still a lot to talk about. We need to talk a little bit more about the injuries, and we'll get to that next segment. And we're going to also talk about you know dropping to eight and four, and now you don't control your own destiny in the playoffs. 
A uh, lot more to cover on this game specifically, but I want to tell you about our friends first. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. The holidays can be very stressful for people, whether or not you like to go send presents to your loved ones or you like to spend time with family, which can be very stressful as well. BetterHelp is here to help you throughout the holidays. Whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you can you get to define how you give to yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the rough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love during the holiday season. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's very easy to use. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off the first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. All right, we kind of already touched on the injuries a little bit before we got to this segment, but let's go ahead and just go through it really quick. Drew Tranquil was missing with a uh, concussion really early in the game. Was it on the first drive? I mean, it was. I know it was early. It might have been the first, mm-hmm. second drive, somewhere in there. Uh, I, I, it was very early. I think it was maybe on the second or third play of the game because he only played a couple of snaps tonight. Yeah, and so you're sitting there in a situation where you put Jack Cochran in, and quite frankly – for as much as Jack Cochran has been able to play, I think he played pretty well. I think that he showed uh, some things. He was able to get side to side. He he made tackles. He was aggressive. I'm not going to say he got all the calls right. I'm sure that the, there was some things he missed. If you go back and watch the film, I'm sure you're going to see it. But considering he's their third middle linebacker, I think you got to feel pretty good about what he looked like tonight. And as you already mentioned, Nick Bolton is probably a guy that maybe could come back next week. Yeah, I mean, if you're the Chiefs, you're certainly hoping that the Dick Bolton is ready to go, and and that was the indication I got this week that um, there was never really any chance that Bolton was going to play this week. Uh, this was really about getting him acclimated and back on the field and knocking off some of the rust. Um, it was it's more about next week. So let's see. You know, we'll get a good look at him on Wednesday to see if they're going to be putting him with the number one defense. Um, you know, with concussions like Tranquil, I mean, that can be a couple of days. It can be a couple of games. You never know with those things. So you just have to kind of take them as they go. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Chiefs now desperately need Nick Bolton back. And and circling the Buffalo game was kind of always the plan and their hope for the best case scenario because this, uh, you, <laughs> Buffalo is going to, you're going to need him. I mean, I mean, even before the Tranquil injury, you were really hoping that you'd be able to get Nick Bolton back for that one. Yeah, and he's going to be a key cog in the middle uh, trying to help with the run defense, and I think that's going to be something that's big uh, because if you look at the Kansas City losses over the past couple of weeks, obviously they lost to Philadelphia. That's a, a little bit of a different ball game, but the Broncos and the Packers really took it to the Chiefs and ran the ball at him, uh, and I think that that's something that Nick Bolton would help with. I think that he's going to be somebody that can step in and really help uh, with the run defense a little bit in the middle of the field. I think that's one thing that he really thrives on, uh, and you're absolutely right. Tranquil could be out. You know, he could be back in next week. He could be out for a couple of weeks. I will say this, and I'm not saying that this means anything for whether or not he's going to be able to play, but it was nice for him. It was nice to be able to see him walk to the locker room. He at least had the ability to walk by himself to the locker room so he wasn't still doozy after the hit. Because that He took quite the knee to his head. Yeah, and it was it wasn't like he went directly to the locker room. They took him over to the medical tent where they they do the initial exam, and that one is you know if if you if you clear that one, you can go back into the game. So clearly, he didn't clear that exam. Went back to the locker room for the further evaluation, and that's what kept him out eventually. So yeah, I mean, it's it, at least it was not as clear cut that he had to immediately go back to the locker room. But again, I mean, concussions you just never know which way they're going to go. Um, the real thing for me with these injuries is, you know, with losing Brian Cook, you know, and especially in this game, I mean, it was late, you know, when you, you do lose Cook, but have, but losing Cook and, and losing 
tranquil. You're really talking about the middle of your defense, uh, you know, because typically, you know, Brian Cook's on the back end. So you're really talking about not only the guy that you're a racer in the middle, but kind of your racer on the back end, too. And now as a Chiefs, you're very fortunate to have a guy like Mike Edwards who can step in there and play back. But, you know, he's got the experience, but he doesn't have the speed and, and the to me, the recognition and anticipation that Brian Cook has. So there's a little bit of a trade off there. Um, Jamari Connor is obviously having, a, I think, a really good rookie season. But, you know, he's he's one of those guys that they really use as more of a cover safety. Um, you know, I don't think that they're ever going to move in the corner or anything like that. But that's how they're kind of using him right now and not necessarily as a back end guy. So you really are hoping that Mike Edwards can come in to at least allow Jamari Connor to continue to play his role and especially Justin Reed to play his because Justin Reed's his most valuable when you're able to move him around the field and play him in the box and on the line of scrimmage. Well, and you talk about Cook and think about, I'm trying to think there's been at least two plays I can think of where he saved touchdowns because of his speed, because of his ability on the back end. Edwards doesn't have that, and I'm not trying to take a shot at Edwards. He's a fantastic player. I'm really glad the Chiefs have him regardless of this injury. I think that he has been a great third safety for him. But he doesn't have that kind of speed. He doesn't have that ability. So that's going to be something they're going to lose on the back end. Cook has been playing fantastic, and that's going to be a really hard injury to, to get past. There were a couple other injuries. We already kind of, kind of talked about you know, Don, Donovan Smith, but you know Charles Minnehue missed a couple of snaps. Justin Reed missed a couple of snaps. I don't think that either of those guys are going to have issues long term, but something to watch regardless. Yeah, and, and and Pacheco was the same way. I mean, you're hoping that it didn't look like he really hyperextended anything, although he could have the way he got bent over there. And I'm, I wouldn't necessarily anticipate that he gets any suspension for that punch. You know, usually you, you've got to have some repeat behavior in order for it to get to the penalty phase. But I am sure that Isaiah Pacheco was going to be lighting the paycheck this week after that little exchange at the end. Yep. Um, but you know, it's both, both how he feels, uh, tomorrow and, and Wednesday is going to be worth watching because sometimes, and you know, Hey, journal and situations like that, you can feel a little bit different a couple of days after, you know, uh, the way he got bent like that. Yeah. And that's definitely something that you're going, that you're going to have to watch. I'm very curious to see what he has on injury designation during the week, because he would be a huge missing piece if he's not able to go against Buffalo. Uh, but you're absolutely right. It looked like it could have been a much worse injury. Luckily, he was able to roll out of it. Uh, I do have a question. You know, when we look at this game and we look at how they play defense, do you think that not having Tranquil being able to call the, the game in the middle of the field changed the way they play defense as the game went on? Uh, it's possible. I mean, you know, it, a lot of, you know, what you, you, you know, I, I think they would typically do the same number of calls, but the one thing that you missed there with having either Bolton or Tranquil out there is just their experience as being able to line guys up and ad make adjustments during the play. So I would imagine that they they called pretty much the same game, but I, I think you, and I think you certainly saw it in a couple of situations that maybe Cochran was a little late on making some adjustments or missed something. And, you know, and other guys were trying to help out. I mean, you know, that's where Justin Reed really comes in. I mean, you could, I think you could tell a couple of times that he was trying to help out Cochran and he's trying to help them set things too. But there's no doubt. I mean, I, there was. A, it looks like a couple of plays where maybe they weren't lined up exactly the way that they want to, and at least to be as far as how the offense was set. And I mean, that's something that you know you only want to learn with experience. And you know, and Jack's not had a ton of experience on the field with the first team defense in those situations. Um, obviously, he wouldn't have really significantly prepped for that role this week. So you know, Tranquil would have taken most, if not all, of them the snaps with the ones as the. A mic. So it's a tough situation to come into, but you know, there's no doubt. I mean, I think there was probably a couple of, you know, at least situations that the chiefs got themselves into that maybe they don't with Bolton or tranquil, but I, I don't think that Spags necessarily changed the game plan once they lose their mic guy. It just looked like I didn't see the exotic blitzes that I would expect Spags to have send and uh, not going to say that Love didn't play well when he was blitzed. He threw the ball up and gave his guys a chance and it worked out more often than not for him. Well, and, you know, part of it is that a lot of the times you're going to see the, the Chiefs in their blitzing situations, it's going to be third and long. And the Packers just That's never had too. very many third and long. So the Chiefs yep. just were, were so bad on first and second downs tonight that it never really gave themselves an opportunity to, to break out some of their blitzes. And on top of that, you, you then you have to make the adjustment to the fact that it was clear 
that the Packers wanted Jordan Love to get rid of the ball as quickly as possible. So, um, I mean, I, I think both those factors did a lot, played a lot into just how much, you know, that maybe Spags had to dial back the blitzing from what he would normally like to do. Yeah, and that's something that we're going to have to watch and see what they do against Buffalo. I'm sure they're going to have a different game plan uh, going into that game. They've played Josh Allen plenty, so they're going to have a pretty good idea of what he's going to be doing. Uh, and obviously we'll talk about that as the week goes on. But there's a lot to talk about when continuing with this game and looking forward uh, to the playoffs, which you know at this point they are now 8-4 and four and they do not hold the number one seed. They do not hold you know the ability to determine if they're going to get the number one seed. So we're going to talk about that right after this. I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is fantastic. You need to check these guys out. If you want a last-minute ticket, Game Time is the place where you need to go get it. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total up front, so you know you're going to get a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour before after it starts, it's the place to find last-minute seats. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code. Locked on NFL, L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download game, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, we looked at this game and we were thinking that the, they were going to have a chance to win this game and go to nine and three and determine and really show where they were going to be in the playoffs at this point. Now they're eight and four and they're chasing at this point. What do you see that's going to be different going forward? Uh, do you think that this team overlooked this Packers team? I don't think that they overlooked them, uh, but I do think that, you know, it's some of the the same things that we have been talking about as far as, you know, just where the weaknesses of this team are. I mean, the the offense was obviously a problem again tonight. I mean, it's, it hasn't been performing to the team expectation that this team has, and they're not getting the production from the receivers that they need. So, you know, that's a big part of it. Um, they've also obviously been getting some – rough and inconsistent offensive line play, especially from their tackles. And that's part of it. Um, I, I think the bigger concern, you know, certainly was defensively tonight. And if you want to put that on the injuries, I, I won't argue with that. Um, you know, I mean, they talked about during the broadcast, there was also some issues with slipping that, you know, the, the Chiefs did not think that they were going to have any issues with. I mean, it came up there as a question during the week and they felt pretty confident they were going to have to be able to deal with it. But they obviously had some guys that, fell down in certain positions and um that shouldn't be happening so you know let's let's see about that but you know as far as how they're shaking out now in the in the conference and the division i mean i i don't obviously have a lot of fears about the afc west they still have a two-game lead um they're three and one in the division they've got wins over everybody you know denver yeah they've got the split but Ultimately, it'll still come down to division play. And for that, the Chiefs have a pretty commanding lead as far as that goes in the tiebreaker. Um, now, when it comes to the conference, hey, what happens tomorrow with Jacksonville and Cincinnati will impact whether the Chiefs are the three or the four in the AFC picture right now. But they are just one game back of Miami and Baltimore. They've got the tiebreaker over both of those. Um, are, are any of these teams, Miami, Baltimore, and Kansas City, going to run the table? I mean, the Chiefs kind of have to now. I mean, they can't bet on just Miami or Baltimore stumbling twice. You know, they kind of have to put themselves in a position where they can, they're going to win their next five games. Um, I do think that Miami and Baltimore will both lose at least once. So, you know, to me, 13 and four probably wins the, 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 the conference. And if that's the case, if 13 and four wins the conference and the Chiefs get to 13 and four, they're still in great shape because they still have the conference tiebreaker over pretty much everybody that they could end up in, in a tie with. So uh, that's, that's, that's the a thing. Huge that's the thing about, you know, these NFC games is, you know, they just don't have the same impact as a loss in the conference. So 
you know, yeah, the Chiefs finished two and three against the NFC. That's not ideal, especially, you know, outside of the Eagles. It hasn't been the toughest of schedules. I mean, the Vikings, or they were they were probably the Vikings were at their best when the Chiefs saw them. But, you know, two and three is not ideal, but they are still six and one in the conference. And that's gonna put them in good stead. So if the Chiefs went out, to me, I, I think it's better than 50-50 that they're the number one seed in the AFC. But at this point, with where this team is, winning five in a row, that might be a more of a challenge than we think. Yeah, that's a huge challenge. And obviously, the one thing that I will say is they had the second easiest schedule going through the rest of the season starting in week 13. Uh, they had the second toughest schedule the first part, I think the first 12 weeks, uh, and the second easiest the next six weeks. So at that point, I mean, I think you got to feel pretty good that they have a chance to run the, the you know, the, the gauntlet and win all the games. And you're absolutely right. They're six and one in the conference. So if they win the rest of their games, they have a lead over everybody. The Ravens have three losses in conference. The Dolphins have two, but the Chiefs beat them. The Chiefs beat the Jaguars. They're in position to be able to sustain and win as long as one of those teams finds a way to lose. And I and I think Baltimore plays San Francisco. And if Baltimore plays San Francisco, if San Francisco plays anything like what they played like today against the Eagles, uh, I don't think the Baltimore is going to win that game. Uh, Miami, that's a little bit of a different one. I'm going to have to look more into who they play the rest of the season, but I do think that they're going to have a tough time uh, winning out as well. So I agree with you there. Uh, obviously, as you said, this is not where you want it to be. You don't want to be two and three against the NFC, especially with who they played. Um, uh, you caught the Packers at the wrong time. And I think that one thing that Kansas City's got to figure out is one thing that you pointed out earlier, how are they going to deal with the lateral offense? Because I do think that that's one of the ways that they, you know, got out of position today and were beat multiple times with, you know, sweeps or reverses or something similar. And you, if if teams see that, they're going to start doing it to you. So they got to find a way to stop it. Yeah, and and I mean that's that's why I say that I think that everybody else at the top of the AFC are going to have some losses because the Ravens have a three week stretch coming up where they play Jacksonville, the Niners, and the Dolphins. So obviously the Dolphins and the Ravens are both, one of them is definitely going to have a loss. They might get two losses. Uh, like you said, the Dolphins play the Ravens and they play the 49ers or they play the Dallas Cowboys. So in back-to-back weeks. So that's going to be a tough one. I mean, it's the Chiefs compared to the other teams that are leading the divisions right now in the AFC have a much easier schedule because really Buffalo is the toughest game left. And that's going to be tough for a lot of reasons because Buffalo's coming off a bye and Buffalo is in the same position that Green Bay was tonight. This was a must win game for the Packers to stay in the playoff race. Pat, Bills are going to have the same situation. It's a must win game for them to stay in the playoff race. So you're going to have an equally motivated team. And, you know, and you asked about whether the Packer or the Chiefs overlooked the Packers. I really don't think that they did, but if you ask me which team had the had more energy and more motivation tonight, it was Green oh, by Bay. Far. Yeah. And by far. And I think that was a big, big factor in this game. Yeah, and they obviously wanted the game from the get-go, and that was something that showed out on the first drive. The thing that was crazy to me is you watch this game, and yes, we talked about the Chiefs you know, beat themselves. You get, you get sacks in the red zone instead of scoring touchdowns. But to look at this game going into the second half, both of them basically had 15 minutes of possession. They both were, I mean, they weren't stopping each other. At that point, it was, they were taking long drives down the field. And I think that also played into Kansas City's defense getting worn down in the second half. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I, there's one thing I did want to say too, and it's because we've talked about this before, you know, I think a couple of weeks ago, is that this team really, really reminds me a lot of the 2021 Chiefs. And that team, went through something that's exactly what this team is doing right now. I mean, the, this this team right now is two and three in their last five games. Um, that's not normally what the Chiefs are. But then, you know, those 21 Chiefs went through a stretch that I thought they lost four of six and they struggled against some bad teams. You know, they they lost to the Titans, you know, terribly, which the Titans were a bad team, but they just got clobbered in that game. Um, they struggled against the Giants. They struggled against the Packers. Those were a couple of Patrick Mahomes' worst games of his career. And this has been the same stretch. I mean, we've seen now another a couple of games here in this this losing streak, as I call it. I mean, even though it's not hasn't been back to back, but 
you know, losing three of five in which Patrick Mahomes has played some of his worst football, or at least his numbers have been that bad. I don't think it's always been his fault, but his numbers have been bad. So the problem is that 21, 21 team was a good team, but it was flawed. And that's the fear with this team is that if they don't address their flaws and figure things out, this is absolutely a team that I, I think has the ceiling to make a Super Bowl. But if they don't fix what's wrong, they're absolutely going to get stopped at some point in the playoffs. And it could be in the first game. And it could be in the final game. Yeah, it's definitely something that you have to watch. And I do think that I th- I agree with you. I think the ceiling is Super Bowl, but there's going to have to be a lot of things that they're going to have to get figured out. The one thing I will say is I don't remember seeing a drop tonight. Uh, so that's at least a little bit of a, a positive sign uh, in that regard. Uh, but obviously, we already talked about penalties being an issue and turnovers. Uh, the one turnover, you know, Ryan and I talked about this going into this game that if they did not turn the ball over, or they won the turnover battle. I thought I think that they win that game going away pretty easy. But the problem is, you turn the ball over uh, against a team that you can't stop, and they just couldn't stop them. That's one thing we haven't seen from the Chiefs' defense most of the season is they've always been able to find ways to get stops on teams. They couldn't do that this game. Uh, that's going to be something that they're going to have to watch and they're going to have to figure out for next week because I guarantee you Buffalo is going to be using a lot of the same thing that Green Bay did uh, looking to beat this team. Yeah, and you know, and I, I didn't answer the question very well earlier when you were talking about it, but you know, the Packers and the way that they attacked the Chiefs, I mean, it was – I, I I get, you know, everybody will say that, hey, the loss of, of, of not having a, either Bolton or Tranquil out there was what hurt this team. But to me, I mean, it was the Packers came in with a specific game plan. It was to attack the Chiefs on the edges and to and to kind of beat the Chiefs outside in. And once they got the Chiefs watching on the outsides, when they kind of pounded away a little bit on the inside. Well, so to me, it was just an absolutely perfectly executed game plan. Yeah, and it wasn't just like you talk about running outside and that, that was part of it, but it was also spreading out. It was getting the wide receivers out to where you can't, you know, fake a blitz coming from way outside versus, you know, coming from, you know, three yards from the from the tackle. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that it's, you know, with where you line up your players and how you run routes and how you set up your offense that can dictate what the offense or what the defense can and cannot do. Uh, and I think that also played into this. And, you know, and once again, I mean, you know, in in an eight point ball game, which Chiefs, I mean, that's about the extent of the Chiefs kind of getting blown out. I mean, we talked about the fact that they play so many close games and so many one score games, still a one score game. But I I, it probably we probably won't fixate on this play as much because there were so many others, especially with some of the, the odd officiating calls and some of the other plays. But the fourth and one, Jordan Love punt is why I call it because that's what it was. I mean, yep. you know, they were going to take a shot uh, clearly downfield. I mean, I, but you know, fourth and one, you should be looking for the first down. Jordan Love just gets blitzed and is like, I have nothing to do with this ball. I'm just going to chuck it downfield because he doesn't care if it gets intercepted. You know, right. if it gets intercepted, uh, frankly, that was better for the Packers because it would have the equivalent of a punt. And instead there's three defenders around the ball and Romeo Dobbs just has it fall into his hands and he holds on to it as he's going to the ground. I mean, Sometimes you just have bad luck, and that's exactly what that play was because there was no great football play to it. That was just a lucky yeah. play and execution. No, and I don't disagree with you, although I will argue a little bit and say that uh, I also saw hands to the face, I think, on Mike Dan against Mike Dan on that specific play. There was, yes. Uh, and so, you know, terrible missed calls, but it is what it is. We're not going to sit here and talk about the rest because the Chiefs beat themselves. It wasn't just the referee and they – did bad enough to lose this game for themselves. Matt, thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on. Ryan and I will be back tomorrow to talk more about this game. Uh, And then Matt will be back on Wednesday to get you ready for the Buffalo Bills game. Thank you all for listening today, and we will talk to you tomorrow.